This is the most accurate Voyage of Despair easter egg tutorial in 2022. I have some really helpful tips in this video that will help you beat the hardest steps and the most annoying steps in this easter egg. So if you can beat this quest thanks to this guide, let me know by dropping a like and commenting down below. And with all that being said, let's jump straight into the class setup. For your class setup, you want to bring the Strife, the Wraith Fire, and for your specialist, you either want to bring the Chakrams or the Viper and Dragon. I say the Viper and Dragon because the level 3 part of it kind of acts like a monkey bomb, so that could be helpful in certain moments, but most of the time I prefer the Chakrams just because the level 3 effect makes you pretty much invincible. For your perks, you want to bring Dying Wish, Victorious Tortoise, PhD Slider, and finally in your modifier slot you want to bring Winter's Whale. For your elixirs, you want to bring Anywhere But Here, Temporal Gift, Equipment, that one's important, make sure you have Equipment, and Arsenal Accelerator. If you don't mind running Mega Elixirs, then you could bring things such as Blood Debt, Cashback, the Fire Sales, and so on. And additionally, for a Talisman, you want to bring either the Major or Minor Reinforced Charm. Putting this on will give your shield more health, so you spend less points on repairing your shield, but it's not necessary. As far as the weapons that you'll want to get, you're going to want to get the Hellion Salvo out of the Mystery Box. Obviously, it's the best weapon in the game. You want to get the Acid Kraken for a step on the Easter Egg, and then you'll want to get the Ice Kraken for the boss fight, and finally you want to get the Homunculus out of the Mystery Box as well. When you spawn in, just stay in the spawn room for the first 3 or 4 rounds, and if you get a double points, make sure you pop your Temporal Gift before you grab it. I say to stay in spawn for the first 4 or so rounds because there's not really much we can do until we get the Sentinel Artifact unlocked. And to do that, you have to make a way across the entire map, which costs 6,250 points. Get to the end of round 4, save one zombie, and go activate the Sentinel Artifact. Along the way, if you have the spare points, feel free to hit the Mystery Box. Once you activate the Sentinel Artifact, now we need to open Pack-a-Punch by activating the 4 switches. While you're doing this, I suggest getting the Zombie Shield as well. There's three parts with three locations each, and two of them are right outside of spawn. So get all three parts and craft the shield on the workbench by the poop deck. Right here is a very, very quick guide to build it. So I'm sorry if it's too fast for you to understand, but honestly, if you don't know how to build the shield on this map, maybe you shouldn't be trying the easter egg until you've learned the map a little bit. At this time, I would also recommend getting the Kraken distillation parts as well. Again, there's three parts you need for this, but this time there's only two spawn locations for each part. You don't need to craft this right now as we will not be using it until later on in the easter egg, but it's good to just get it out the way now. Also, while you're unlocking Pack-a-Punch, make sure you drain the water in both the cargo hold and the engine room. So obviously, activate the Pack-a-Punch pieces at the bottom of the grand staircase, the cargo hold, the poop deck, and the engine room, and when you do that, we can start the easter egg. Now we are on the clock step. To complete this step, you have to find 4 clocks around the map with symbols next to them, and you need to input them into the ship. The symbols you're looking for is a triangle, an upside down triangle, triangle with a line through it, and an upside down triangle with a line through it. Or up, down, up dash, and down dash. If that sounds confusing, don't worry, it's not. Here's all the locations right here. There is 6 spawn locations in total, and you need 4 of them. When you find a symbol, look at the clock near it and write down what time it is. And just a heads up, you can't tell the time with these clocks like you would normally do. For some reason, if the clock normally reads 2.55, in game it will read 3.55. So basically just remember at what numbers the hour hand and the minute hands are pointing to. But when you find a location with a symbol, write down the time and the corresponding symbol. When you found all four clocks, make your way to the bridge by the escargot wall by and you'll see four levers that if you look closely, you'll see the same symbol on all four of these levers. Now these represent the minute hands on the clocks. For example, if your clock with the normal triangle on it has the minute hand on 45, then you turn the lever three times to the left, so it's also on 45. Just imagine these levers as a clock is basically the easiest way to complete it. So input your minute hands to all four of the corresponding levers, and then make your way to the poop deck. Now you'll see two more levers by where you activated the Sentinel Artifact, but if you notice, these do not have a symbol on them. So you either need to remember what levers are for which symbols, or you can look at the small lever and see that that represents a minute hand that you already turned. So for example, if only one of your clock's minute hands is at 55, then you'll know that that lever is for the time that reads 1055. You can either do it that way, or you can look at this cheat sheet on the screen right now. These two levers represent the hour hands for the up dash and down dash clocks. 
Input your hour hands and then make your way down to the engine room and do the same thing as you did before. There are four levers down here, but two are broken, so only two work. Again, look at this cheat sheet and use it to input the correct hour hands and the corresponding levers. And if you do it correctly, you are done with this step and you will hear this audio cue. If for some reason you didn't get an audio cue, go back and look at the times again and make sure you didn't input any times incorrectly and make sure you didn't read the clocks normally as I already said. Now we're on the outlet step, and again for this step, we need to look for six different outlet locations around the map and look for the ones that are sparking with a catalyst effect. If you find one, write down the location where it is and what effect it is spewing out. Again, we need to find four locations, one with water, fire, electric, and acid. When you find all four, you need to get to round eight, as that's the earliest round that catalysts can spawn. When one spawns, you need to take that catalyst near the outlet with the same effect and kill that catalyst near the outlet. And if you've done it correctly, his soul will go into the outlet, leaving a red circle on the ground. Now, do not interact with this circle yet. I say that for two reasons. Number one, there's a certain order we have to do these in, and number two, it'll throw you into a pretty challenging lockdown. So before we hop in, we need to get set up a little bit. Now, as I said, we need to get the Kraken, the Hellion, and the Homunculus for this Easter egg. So while you're doing this step, start hitting the mystery box for the ladder. And for the Kraken, there's two ways you can get it. One by just hitting the box, and the second by doing a side quest. To do the side quest, it's not difficult. On round 10, the Stoker will spawn in. He is this map's heavy enemy. If you kill the Stoker by shooting his weak points, he will drop his Stoker's key. And make sure you pick it up. Now, there's no inventory slot for this on the HUD for some reason, but if you see it on the ground, pick it up. And now you have to find a treasure chest. There's five locations for the treasure chest around the map that you have to check. Here's all the locations where the treasure chest can spawn. There's five locations in total. And when you find the chest, unlock it. And now it is a soul box. So fill it up with around 10 or so zombies, and after enough zombie souls, it'll close and move. You need to find it and do this two more times. After you fill it for the third time, the chest will close and reopen with an item inside. You need to find the matching symbol on a crate on the edge of the ship somewhere in the map. Again, there's five locations in total. I'm showing you all five right here. When you find it, a Kraken tentacle will come out of the water, giving you the Kraken. But now getting back to the catalyst stuff, when a catalyst spawns, take it to the corresponding outlet and kill the catalyst near the outlet. Now you can only do this once per round. So when you do one, just focus on ending the round and getting your weapons and your perks. Once all four are in, you need to interact with them in a certain order to do this correctly. And the order is as follows. The acid one first, the water lockdown second, then the electric one, and finally the fire lockdown. So go to the outlets in that order. Make sure you have the Kraken before you start the first lockdown though, as it'll make getting the two elemental variants that you need for this easter egg so much easier. So to complete this step, you need to complete four separate lockdowns. During these lockdowns, the game will spawn a bunch of one type of catalyst and one or two Blightfather. For this lockdown, just train around the poop deck, it's no big deal. During the first lockdown, I want you to shoot a poison zombie with your Kraken, and when you kill him, he has a 50-50 chance to drop his catalyst heart. If you see it on the ground, pick it up, and now thankfully, you can actually see this in the HUD. So if you see a catalyst heart, now all you have to worry about is surviving and getting to the end of the lockdown. When you get a white flash, the lockdown is now finished, and now you can grab the max ammo and the sentinel artifact. And just a heads up, a decent amount of the steps going forward will have a white flash just like this, to indicate that you have completed the step. Before we start the second lockdown, make your way down to the engine room and craft the Kraken distillation on this workbench. We will need this version of the Kraken for a step very soon. Now go to the water circle and interact with it, and it'll teleport you to the cargo hold with the water rising. Now if you ask me, this is the hardest of the four lockdowns to complete. This lockdown will spawn a bunch of water catalysts and a Blightfather. I like to stay in the front of the cargo hold for this lockdown, but there's not really a super safe location for this one. Just kill everything as soon as you see it. That's the best advice I can give you for this lockdown. And obviously pop your specialist if you get in a tight situation. So again, at this point, kill a water catalyst with your Kraken. And if you see the catalyst drop an ice foot, make sure you go grab it. Also be mindful of your ammo count because you do not get max ammo for completing the second and the fourth lockdowns. Now finish the lockdown, drain the water, and grab the Sentinel artifact. Now remember, do not craft the water kraken yet. Just save the ice foot in your inventory for now. Now go to your electric circle and it'll teleport you right outside the grand staircase. 
There's not really much to say about this, it'll spawn a Blightfather and some electric zombies. When you complete the lockdown, grab the artifact and the max ammo and go to your final circle and do the fire lockdown. Now this lockdown is a bit different. You have to defend yourself in the boiler room from fire catalysts and stokers. Blightfathers do not spawn in this lockdown. To beat this phase, I recommend camping on this catwalk as you see me doing here. Once you complete the fire lockdown, grab the artifact and now it is almost fully charged. Make your way to the pack punch location in the turbine room, and around this room there are 9 blue pipes with air leaks in them. You have to shoot these air leaks with the poison kraken, and if you do it correctly you'll get a hit marker, and the water will start spewing out of the air leak. A good way to remember this is there's 2 in 3 of the 4 corners in the room, and there's 2 in the center of the ceiling. You have to do this a total of 9 times in this room, and once you shoot the final one, you hear an audio cue, and the water will start to rise. Once the water reaches the top, you can end the round, and most of the time, the pack bunch will teleport to the turbine room. If it doesn't, you'll just have to flip another round until it does. Once it's in the turbine room, however, interact with it to pack a bunch the sentinel artifact, and grab it, and now we are on the infamous planet step. At this point, I'd recommend draining the water again, and getting the ice kraken. To start the planet step, we have to collect 9 orange symbols around the map. And here's all 9 locations, as you see me collecting here. To be honest, the symbols kinda stick out like a sore thumb, but if you can't find them, here's all 9 locations. I normally start from the engine room or the boiler room, whatever you wanna call it, and I collect those 2 symbols, and then I go across the whole ship from there and collect the other 7 symbols. And that's a pretty good way to make sure I don't forget any of them. Once you collect all 9 symbols, now you need to drain the water in the cargo hold, and if you look in the front of the room, you will see a solar system. You need to interact with the solar system to get the order of which planets you have to shoot out of the sky. Before you interact with it, throw a homunculus towards where the pack bunch location is in the cargo hold. And now interact with it and pause the game after every planet that lights up to write down the order. This is important because you don't want to get it wrong because if you get it wrong at any point, you'll have to flip around and redo this whole step. So in my game, the order was Mercury, Venus, Neptune, Saturn, Jupiter, Uranus, Moon, Mars, and finally the Sun. The Sun will always be the final planet that you get. Once you have your code, look at this cheat sheet. Here you'll see every planet and where you'll need to go to collect the planets, which spoiler alert, that's what we're doing. You need to shoot the planets down and collect them in the certain order the game tells you to. When you shoot a planet out of the sky, you need to go to the corresponding location within around 20 seconds on solo and collect it. If you don't grab it in time, or even if you shoot the wrong planet, the planets in the sky will disappear and you'll have to do this whole step over again on the next round. So I'd recommend getting as close to the location as you can before shooting the planet out of the sky to buy you some time. And a quick heads up, there will be a bunch of zombies and bosses at the planet waiting for you, so just go in guns blazing on the zombies. For this video, we're going to start off with Mercury. Now Mercury is the dim purple planet in the sky, or if you want to think about it like this, it is the closest purple planet to the sun. Shoot the planet out the sky, and when you do, you need to go collect it in the mail rooms. Venus is the closest red planet to the sun, so try not to mistake it for Mars, as that will fail this step. This is where I see people, myself included, fail this step the most. They confuse Venus and Mars. So just make sure you're shooting the red planet that's closest to the sun, but when you do, go to the millionaire suite and kill the zombie and collect the planet. The moon is next, and the moon is by far the easiest planet to collect. There's not a special moon in the sky or anything, you just gotta shoot the moon in the skybox. Once you shoot it, go collect it where you grab the symbol outside the dining hall. It'll be in this window. Mars is the bright red planet that's also the farthest red planet away from the sun. Again, try not to confuse Mars with Venus as that will fail the step. When you shoot it, it'll drop in the boiler room, so again, shoot it near the shield wall by and get on the catwalk by the fast travel as soon as possible and collect the planet. Now, Jupiter is the biggest planet in the sky besides the sun, obviously. So again, this one is pretty hard to mess up. However, you need to collect the planet inside the engine room. So shoot Jupiter beside the shield table and make your way down to the engine room as soon as possible. Just make sure you kill all the zombies below it beforehand so you don't jump into a horde of zombies. Now Saturn is probably the easiest one to do because everyone knows what Saturn is. It's the gigantic planet with the rings around it. When you shoot it, it'll drop by where the escargot wabai is, by where you did the first part of the clock step. So go there and it'll be on a chair behind the escargot wabai. Uranus is the big purple planet that's the farthest from the sun. Shoot it and go collect it in the staterooms. And finally, we have Neptune. 
Now Neptune is the anomaly here. Neptune will be floating in the water around the ship. Most of the time it'll be around the aft decks or the poop deck area, but again, it can go all the way around the ship in the water. If you're worried about finding this, don't because finding it is not the hard part. The hard part is actually trying to shoot it out of the water. I don't know why, but I always have so much trouble specifically shooting Neptune out of the water. It has a really finicky hitbox if you ask me, but once you're finally able to shoot it, the planet will land on this boat across from the GKS Wabot. Once you grab all 8 planets, you are now almost done with this step. Before you shoot the sun out of the sky, you need to go pack a bunch of Hellion as much as you can and get the homunculus. Once you have a Pack-a-Punch Kraken, a decent Pack-a-Punch Hellion, and Homunculus, make your way to where you spawn, and when you're here, shoot the sun out of the sky and it'll drop right in front of the fast travel. When you interact with it, you'll be on the Iceberg step, which is a pretty fun step. It's a lot more fun than the planet step. To beat this step, you have to make your way to the other side of the boat, destroying all the icebergs along the way. Now, there's a pretty cool shortcut that I'll be showing you later on to bypass the last three icebergs as well as a Blightfather, but I'll save the shortcut for when we get to that part of the step. So to destroy most of the icebergs, you want to angle yourself so when you shoot the ice kraken, it does damage to both the zombies as well as the iceberg. So take this path that you see me do here, and when you're at the iceberg blocking the grand staircase, pop your specialist and take out these two icebergs so you can get past the staircase. Now at this point, there will be a stoker. You don't have to pay attention to him, just throw a homunculus and take out the iceberg in front of you. Now throw another homunculus where you see me throw it and destroy this iceberg. This iceberg will give you a max ammo when you destroy it. Now when you get the max ammo, we are now at the shortcut. Make your way to the mystery box location by the aft decks, but along the way, throw another homunculus. Now pull out your hellion and aim for the iceberg at the very back of the poop deck and rain fire on it. After 8 to 12 rockets, you'll get a white flash showing that you are done with this step. Doing the iceberg step this way allows you to both save ammo as well as not having to worry about taking out the final 3 icebergs as well as taking out a Blightfather. So this shortcut is always worth doing if you have the firepower to do so. When the red circle is on the poop deck, that is the activation circle for the boss fight. So before you interact with it, get completely set up. Get all your perks, get a fully packed Hellion, pack a bunch of Ice Kraken, get your Homunculus, get a full Specialist, get a full Shield, and additionally you could get the upgraded Ice Shield, but that's very complex to do and honestly it's not worth it. But if you want as much of an advantage as you can possibly get, search up a guide on how to get the Ice Kraken on this map on YouTube. But anyways, when you have all that, Go interact with the red circle and it'll teleport you in the ocean and there will be a tree with a slot to insert the sentinel artifact. So swim up to it and do so and doing this will play a series of pretty cool animations if I do say so myself of all the planets aligning and it'll teleport you back on top of the poop deck with a gigantic iceberg coming out of the water. When the iceberg erupts the eye of Odin will spawn. Now there is five phases to this boss fight. And I'll explain each when we get there, but this is not like the Valentina fight on Mauer der Toten for example. Every single phase is in the same order every single game. There's really no RNG in this fight. For the first two phases, you don't even have to worry about the eye itself. He's just going to be sitting there observing and watching you survive an onslaught of enemies. And when I say that, I mean every type of enemy on this map. Zombies, Catalysts, Blightfathers, Stokers, you name it, it'll spawn in this boss fight. Now, a good rule of thumb for this boss fight is do not grab the drops the game gives you until the phase is complete. Most of the time, the first two phases will end after you kill two Blightfathers, but on some rare occasions, it'll end after you only kill one Blightfather. But feel free to throw a homunculus if you're overwhelmed and spam your Kraken at the Stokers and a Catalyst and spam your Hellion at the Blightfather. Also, during the boss fight, you will see these ice circles on the floor in the playing area. Now try your best to avoid them. If you step in them, they will not insta-down you or nothing, but they will freeze you if you stand in them long enough. And obviously, if they freeze you, the zombies can kill you with you having no line of defense. So try not to do that. But if somehow, some way, you get frozen by these ice circles, spam your melee button to break out of it as soon as possible. The first two phases of this boss fight really aren't that difficult. They're more or less just a waiting game. You just have to basically kill zombies for two to three minutes. And when you get a white flash on your screen, just like the rest of this Easter egg, it's telling you that you have beaten this phase of the boss fight. So at this point, go to the back of the poop deck, collect your max ammo and your carpenter before you get teleported to the next phase. 
Phase 2 takes place in the engine room. Again, this is just like the first phase, although it is a little harder because the engine room is a little more CQC based in the poop deck. But again, just take out all the enemies. I like to hold out by the drops in front of the pack punch location and just spam the ice kraken everywhere. Just like phase one, this phase takes about two minutes to complete and when you get the white flash, grab your drops and be ready to be teleported. Phase 3 takes place in the state rooms. This is the second hardest phase in this boss fight. Now from this point forward in the boss fight, the eye will start attacking you and you have to do damage to it to proceed to the next phase in the boss fight. For this phase, you want to stay out of the hallways as much as possible because his attacks are eye beams that shoot all the way down the hallway and just like the ice circles I previously mentioned, if you get hit by them for long enough, they will freeze you. And again, if you somehow get frozen by it, Spam your melee button to unfreeze yourself as fast as possible. But as I said, he'll shoot his eye beam down one of the two hallways. And what you want to do is you want to peek out of the hallway and spam the Hellion at the eye. If done correctly, he'll give you an audio cue. You have to do this three times to beat this phase. During the downtime while he's not shooting his eye beam, you want to throw homunculus somewhere down the hallway, like by where the Mog 12 wall by is, for example. And that'll get all the zombies off you so you can just solely focus on the eye itself. When you get the white flash, grab your drops, and you'll be teleported to phase four, which takes place in the promenade starboard decks. Phase four, I think, is the easiest phase out of this whole boss fight. This area is pretty big to train around, plus there's little downtime for the eye's attacks. So I want you to get a homunculus ready and throw it when you see or hear him starting to teleport. Now obviously throw it away from you and spam the Hellion at the eye when he's shooting his eye beam attack. Doing this will make him teleport back and around five to 10 seconds later, he'll do the same thing. He will teleport and then he will shoot his eye beam and at this point you want to spam your hellion at him until he teleports back a second time. Now at this point your homunculus should have disappeared by now so get another one ready and throw it and shoot the eye when he's attacking for a third and final time and you should be done with this phase. Now obviously grab your max ammo and your carpenter before you get teleported to the fifth and final phase which is back at the poop deck. Now obviously the fifth phase is by far the hardest part of this entire easter egg. But it's not too difficult if you follow my strategy to a T. Before you proceed with this though, I want you to pause your game and listen to me so I can explain exactly how this works because this phase can be pretty overwhelming at first. During this phase, there are three sections of the boss fight. You have to damage him three times and then stop him from insta-killing you and that is one part of this boss fight. And then you have to do that an extra two times to complete this phase as well as this easter egg. He would do a series of teleports and then shoot his ivy. He will teleport either to the front of the ship, the left of the ship, or the right of the ship. You have to shoot him when he's doing his eye beam attack three times, and when you shoot him for the third time, he will teleport back to the front of the ship, and he will give you this audio cue. Now when you hear this, you have to rain fire on the eye, because this sound indicates he is charging up a wipeout attack. If you don't kill him in around six or seven seconds, I believe it is, he will wipe you out. Additionally, if you somehow miss the audio cue, he will be shaking like crazy at the front of the ship. It's impossible to miss. Now the wipeout attack will be the only time that he does this. And you only get the wipeout attack when you damage him three times. When you do enough damage to him, he will teleport and stop shaking. And that is part one of this three part phase completed. Now you have to do it two more times to win. If you're worried about the insta kill attack and you don't think you'll take him out in time, Dying Wish will save you as well as your shield with Victorious Tortoise, but obviously your shield will break upon the attack landing. So try to avoid using that one. And if you're running Mega Gobble Gums, Blood Debt will save you if you have it activated. And additionally, if you have the level three Scepter of Raw and you have a place down, that will revive you if you get wiped out. But this wipeout attack is nowhere near as much of a threat as it was when this Easter egg first came out. So you probably don't even have to worry about the wipeout attack landing. If you just spam him with the Hellion, you should be good. So just spam him with like four to eight rockets with your Hellion and that'll do the trick. Additionally for this phase, every single zombie that can spawn in this map will spawn during this phase. So there is a lot that you have to worry about. But now that you know somewhat how this works, here is my strategy. 
When you first spawn in, get a homunculus ready to throw, and when you see or hear the eye starting to teleport, throw it on the ground and shoot the eye with the Hellion. Around 2-4 to four Hellion shots later, he'll teleport back to the front of the ship, and that is how you know you have damaged him enough. Now, if you threw a homunculus exactly when I told you to, then you should have enough time to damage him a second time before your first homunculus disappears. If not, just train the zombies around and shoot the eye for a second time. Now get another homunculus ready to throw and throw it when you hear him starting to teleport. But for this one, you want to throw it at the back of the poop deck so the zombies aren't in your way for the wipeout attack. Now don't throw it outside of the poop deck because for some reason sometimes the game will count that as an area outside the playing area, therefore the homunculus will not attract the zombies. So just throw it near where the pack punch location is for the poop deck. When you're getting ready to shoot him for the third time, throw the homunculus and make your way towards the front of the ship, shoot him with the Hellion at the same time. When you damage him enough, he'll instantly teleport to the front of the ship, giving you the aforementioned wipeout attack noise and he'll start shaking. So immediately start spamming him with rockets, and you should do enough damage to him to where he will teleport and stop shaking and that is phase 1 done. Now pop your equipment elixir to get 2 more homunculi. Also, if you see at any point that your shield's about to break, be sure to grab the carpenter, but again, try not to grab the max ammo until you beat part 2. Now, do the same thing again. For the first part, throw a homunculus when he starts to teleport, shoot the eye with your Hellion and he'll teleport back to the front, wait for him to teleport again and shoot him a second time, then throw the homunculus when he teleports for the third time, shoot the eye and deal enough damage to stop him from doing a wipeout attack. Now, you can grab the max ammo and do the same thing for a third and final time. Once you stop his wipeout attack a third time, you will get a white flash and congratulations, you have successfully completed the Voyage of Despair Easter Egg. What a lot of people, myself included, consider to be the hardest Easter Egg in Call of Duty Zombies. If this video helped you out, be sure to drop a like and subscribe if you're new. Again, if you watched this video and you're still somehow having trouble with this Easter Egg, leave a comment down below and I will try to help you out even further. Also, what other maps easter eggs do you want me to make an updated guide for next? Let me know that down below in the comments. I released a video where I completed every single easter egg in Call of Duty Zombies history all in one video. So if you want to check that out, click it on the screen right now. I also made an updated guide for both Blood of the Dead and Garad Krovi. So if any of these videos pique your interest, be sure to check them out. Thank you guys so much for watching, and with that being said, this is Joltz, signing out. Peace!